This is part two of Mind Cure 3, special report. Our last, our last meeting, we, we, we uh, asked the question about <clears throat> why when we go to certain popular ministers or elders of the world, they cannot give us an answer for the reason why the black man is treated with such hatred, cruelty, and degradation. And so we found out that it's because they don't, they're not preaching the faith that God has delivered unto his saints in the Bible. So what we're going to do, we're going we gonna to go through this again, part two, and we're going to also point out how this relates to us in these times we're living in now. Your Bible in chapter uh, Peter, Second Peter chapter two, it says, verse eleven. It says, "For so an interest shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ." So God says it's an interest for us, but we have to go through the door to find out how to get there. It says. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them. So we need to know these things. If we don't know them, then he can't put them in remembrance. The only way we're going to know something is if we study it so that the Holy Ghost can bring it back to our remembrance. Though you know them. And be established in the present truth. Be established in the present truth. So before you can be established in the present truth, you got to know certain things. You got to know the fundamental beliefs of the Bible, which is the sanctuary in connection with the 2300 days, the commandments of God, and the faith of Jesus, which are perfectly calculated to give certainty to those who doubt and to give hope for those for us in the glorious future. So we need to understand these things and this is where we're finna go. Are you ready? We found out last presentation that without vision the people perish but those who keep the law they're gonna be blessed. We found out that Jesus Christ is ministering in the sanctuary in heaven right now. We found out also that when we behold Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation, we found out that it's locked up in signs and signals and that every single piece of the description of the Son of God is documented in the Word of God. Mind Cure 3. Mind Cure 3. For those who don't know, the last morning message to this world is given in the three angels' messages of Revelation chapter 13. But we're looking at how, how this beast power, the Roman Catholic Church, and a apostate system, that means a system of Christianity who have turned away from God and rejected the Bible, how they have ministers and pastors who are not able to give us biblical answers of why the black man is treated with such hatred, scorn, and degradation. And so, as a black person, we need hope, right? Yeah. Hope, hope is expectation, expectation of a glorious future. But if we don't have no hope, how can we expect to go to heaven? When we hear so many preachers talking about heaven is here on earth, you better get yours here on earth. And if we treat it with such scorn, we're going to believe that. And we're going to try to seek a heaven here on earth. And we're going to reject the Bible. And we're going to have a children that's going to be raised up as some atheists and nihilists. Nihilists, is, they don't have no hope for the future. And so God wants us to, to have hope for the future. Okay? The Bible says that the things that are, what that scripture says in Deuteronomy 29, 29, what does it say? I need you to read that one more time. 
Okay. So we. Secret things belong to. That's right. Oh, secret yeah. things belong to who? Let's yeah. find it. Let's find it. Let's find it. So it's a lot of things that God has revealed. Read it out loud. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Mind pure, part three. It says, the secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and to our children forever. Amen. That we may do all the words of this law. Amen. So, the secret things belong to God, but those things that are revealed belong to us. If your child got shot in the middle of the street, is that something that belongs to us? Yes. If your people was being enslaved, is that something that belongs to us? Yes. Is that revealed? Yes. yes. Did we see it on the news? Yes. Then why can't the church talk about it? Why can't present truth ministers talk about it? We're going to see Because right. they think that it don't have nothing found, to do with Salvation. salvation which we found out is a lie because this message is going to every nation kindred tongue and people which is us Indeed. we don't even have a tribe we don't even have a nation that we know nothing about yeah. but we know that we are our people we know we in captivity we know we are people and so what God want to do God yeah. want to cure our minds and the only way he can cure it is with the word of God is slavery a sickness yes then we need to be cured of this slave mentality. mentality. That's right. We're in bondage of our minds. They're keeping us bondage, and the way they keep us bondage is through ignorance. That's right. Ignorance. And winking at certain sins mm -hmm. while they tell you to pray for others in the church. Yes. Sandy Hook, oh, pray for them. Mm -hmm. pray for oh, them. but but these pray brothers got Trump. just got murdered in the street by the police. Sandy, pray for Trump. And they tell no you, good. oh. Oh, don't get involved with no Black Lives Matter. Mm -hmm. All Stay these so-called present truth pastors. Yeah. Don't get involved with that. No, Joe, don't get involved with it. But you better preach it what's going on. But and, they don't have no answer for And this for message, they, yeah, you ain't got they no don't have no solution. So for you them. ain't got no message. You just preaching to benches. Yeah. So when people ask you, when people ask you, why, they are, why know. are we being treated like this? You know, the most pastors can't tell people why. And we're going to see why. Rep Mind Cure Chapter 3. Is that how you feel? Mm -hmm. Is this how most people feel? Yes. Huh? What is that? Is that stress? Mm -hmm. Is that mind damage? How did people get to this feeling? How did people get to that to that point where they're feeling like that? And it's a certain people out it's here. It's someone who caused that. That's from Satan. That's from Satan. Revelation Chapter 18. Verse 11 through 13. It says, And the merchants of the earth. Who are the merchants of the earth? The merchants are the businessmen. The okay. Rockefellers. And yes. The, the, um, the, the, the oil executives. Mm -hmm. Those are merchants. So the this, big is, this is the last message. Mm -hmm. The last warning message to the world. To a dying world. This is the last message for the end time and it talks about slavery did we know that yeah mm -hmm. revelation yeah. chapter 18 1 through 5 i need you to read that loud and clear 1 through 5 yes yeah i'll read it i'll read it i'll read it revelation 18 1 through 5 follow along yeah i'll read i tell you turn the light on says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen. He is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and a hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Stop right there. Okay, where is this angel, where is this message coming from? It's coming down. Coming down, down from, from where? Heaven. From heaven. heaven. Revelation 1 tells us that How's that's the same message I gave to John, right? Mm -hmm. And he gave it to his servants, right? Yes. His angels. And he gave it to John, he gave it to his servants. So it came down from the Father himself in heaven. Yeah. It says, and this angel, is this a regular angel? This is a fourth angel. This is a fourth angel. Do we know who this angel is? Yes, this angel is Jesus. It's a messenger. This angel is Jesus Christ himself. Yep. He gave this message. 
Finish reading. For all nations. Wait. Read that last verse. I think it's verse 3. Read verse 3. For all nations have drunk the wine. Stop. I mean verse 2. Verse 2. It says, And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen. Who is Babylon? Is fallen. Who is Babylon? Babylon is Rome. Babylon is the Roman is, church. It's the merchants of the earth. It's a system. Combined. It's a system. It's a Babylonian system. Is it Controlled ancient Babylon? By... No. Ancient Babylon. When we look at ancient Babylon, can we find out who Babylon is? Yeah. So who was ancient Babylon? Who controlled ancient Babylon? Uh, uh, Rome. It was ruled by who? By the king. By the Imperial Rome. A king, right? Yeah. No, ancient Babylon was ruled by a king. His name is Nebuchadnezzar. Uh -huh. Okay? Uh -huh. So yeah. this is talking about spiritual Babylon. Spiritual Babylon, spiritual Babylon is ruled by kings. Yeah. It's a king. It's a church and state conglomerate. Uh -huh. Okay? So we know that this is this is basic ABCs. Mm -hmm. It says it says it says, and the, uh, and and he cried with a mighty and strong voice, saying, "Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of who? Devils. Devils. What is the habitation? Place to live in. Mm -hmm. That's Not right. Inhabited. So we can say this is a whole community, a whole community, right?" Yeah, Under yeah. a system of a satanic king. Yeah. Babylon. Okay? Babylon. It says, and a hold of every foul spirit. What is a hold? Something you, 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 you're clinging to. Something you're holding on to. No, a hold. What is a so, hold? So basically, this track, this Babylon is... Uh, when you, if, you, if you... Has, if anyone, if anyone ever went to, went to jail... Went to jail when you get handcuffed, they hold you. They hold you. Yeah. It's a hole. Mm -hmm. So it's a place where you are captive. You, you are a slave. Captivity. A hole yeah. of every foul spirit. A spirit is a demon, right? Mm -hmm. A spirit also is a human. Okay? Okay? It says it's a place where you are held captive, slave to your mind. Okay? In prison, what they gonna give you? They gonna give you some drugs, right? It says a hold of, of of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. What is an unclean and a hateful bird? A, a person. A bird represents a person, right? Uh, People, right? What is an unclean haters. and a hateful bird? Okay. Unclean and a hateful bird. Okay, let's turn to Jeremiah. We need to find out what this is. Because we don't want to be guessing on no find out what these birds are, right? A cage is what? Anybody got a bird cage? Cage is a prison. That's right. Can a bird get out of that cage? A dandy bird cage? No. So that means they're captive, right? They're slaves. Okay, so Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5, I think. Wait, wait, wait. Jeremiah chapter 5. Wrong verse. Um, Jeremiah chapter. Jeremiah. Forgive me, I can't even find it right now. Jeremiah chapter twelve. Jeremiah chapter twelve. So to find out what these birds are, I'm gonna read this to you. And uh, uh, it's a cage of every unclean, hateful bird. So. I'm going to give drop, drop by. This is a prophet. This is prophet Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is, is delivering a message. Okay? Prophet Jeremiah is delivering a message. Okay? okay? And Jeremiah tired. He tired. Jeremiah tired of preaching to these uh, apostate kings yeah. in Babylon. Spiritual Babylon. Which is Israel at this time period. And so Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 5, I'm Jeremiah 12, verse 5, it says, God speaking, he says, If thou hast run with the footmen, and they have wearied thee, now in the military, footmen is the infantry. Now how does that? Footmen are the ones in charge of the house. So now Jeremiah, what he's doing, he's debating with these kings of Israel. 
that's about to go into Babylonian captivity. Mm -hmm. It says, how can thou contend with the horses? The horses is the cavalry. The cavalry. Those are the ones that's going to come in with the, with the big guns. Okay? Those are the spies and the scouts. So, if, if they're worrying about you, how are you going to contend with the uh, horses? And the horses, that's military forces that's going to come in and take Israel captive. Babylon. It says, and if the land of peace, let's talk about Israel. You can say the seven day Adventist church. Wherein thou trusteth, oh, stay in the church, right? They weary thee, they wore you out. Made you feel like that picture on there we're looking at. Yea. Then how wilt thou do in the swelling of the Jordan? When the floods of ungodly men come in. Okay? Verse 6 says, For even your brethren and the house of thy father, even they have dealt treacherously with you. Yea, they have called a multitude after thee. Believe them not, though they speak fair words unto thee. They're going to say some good stuff. Mm -hmm. But don't you believe them? I have forsaken mine house. Is that a habitation? It became a habitation mm -hmm. of devils, right? Mm -hmm. I have felt my heritage. I have left my heritage. That means it's desolate. I have given the dearly beloved of my soul into the hands of her enemies. Mm -hmm. Satan. My heritage is as is, is my heritage is unto me as a lion in the forest. It crieth out against me. It wars against God. Everything's word of God, they say no. Uh, but but or this they war against him therefore have I what's that word say hated it God says he hated it it says my heritage is unto me as a speck of what bird. it's an apostate mm -hmm. it's an apostate bird an unclean bird his people that's apostate the birds round about are against her and the birds round about her were the Babylonian kingdoms were about her. About to take them into captivity. The birds who are about her are against her. Those are the enemy. So God is counting his people just like the enemy. It says, Come ye, assemble all ye beasts. That's nations of the field. Come to devour. Birds are the beasts of the earth. Many what? Pastors. Those are some birds. Many pastors have destroyed my vineyard. Pastors that destroying God's church and God's word and saying that this is don't apply to this day. This don't apply to that day. This don't apply. Pastors are the birds. They have trodden my portion underfoot. They walk and travel upon God's Sabbath and upon his word. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. So that's what a bird is. Okay? Back to Revelation chapter 18. Back to Revelation 18. It says Babylon. It says, and he cried, verse 2, Revelation 18, 2. And he cried mighty with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen. And has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit in the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Okay? The Bible tells us everything needs to be established on how many? Two or, three? two or three witnesses. So we probably need one more witness, don't we? But that's clear. That's clear, I think. But a bird, another bird, it's in Hosea. See if I can find it. It tells you exactly what a bird is. It says, a bird is a fowler, right? Hosea chapter 9. Hosea chapter 9. Are we there? Hosea chapter 9 tells us. We need to find out who these birds is. This is very important for present truth, right? right? For the last days, so we know where we stand, so we can make certain decisions. On if we're going to follow these dirty birds, these pastors, these apostate pastors. Hosea chapter 9, verse 8. It says, The watchman, what? You trying to tell me a, a bird is a watchman? The watchman of Ephraim was my God. What? The watchman of Ephraim was with 
my God. So it was somebody that was with God, a watchman that was with God. But the prophet is a snare and a fowler, a bird. Of a fowler. A snare of a fowler, a trap of a fowler. We know the fowler of Satan. Mm -hmm. It says, it says, in all his ways and hateth in the house of his God. He hates in, in the house of his God. Remember so he said, hates God. He goes to church with a, a bird is, attitude. Remember I said a bird is a He hates his God in the house of his God. So that's a prophet that hates his God in the house of God. Mm -hmm. He's saying that the commandments is done away with. He yes. hates God. The Bible says, to anyone who says if you commit any of the idol, you break any, you know, worship any idol, he says that you're going to be what? What the, what the second commandment says? Thou shalt not bow down thyself. What? Nor serve any other God. It says, he that, what it says? Let's read it. I'm going to read it real quick. Where is it? Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. I'm a long day. You should know that by heart. <laughs> Verse, verse, four, verse 3 says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or that in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the Father unto the children of the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Now these pastors hate God. So that's why the children is getting visited by their father's sins. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. So now we know what that bird is, right? That bird is. So hateful bird. Watchmen. They hate for watchmen, hateful pastors. They hate God. And their children are suffering because of their sins. And the children ain't got a clue. It says... Verse 3 says, for all nations, Revelation 18, verse 3 says, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, idolatry, mm -hmm. and the kings of the earth, Obama, Donald Trump, mm -hmm. name whichever one you want. All of them. Kings of the earth have committed fornication. They also commit idolatry with her. The church, church and state, and the merchants of the earth were the rich men through the abundance of her delicacies. The rich and and the merchants of the earth are rich, wax rich. They grown rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So it's a whole union, the whole system, church, state, mm -hmm. and merchants. It's the system, the merchants, ran by Rome. Okay, so so a merchant. Fourth of July is right here, right? Mm -hmm. Did the merchants get a little richer today? Oh yeah. Huh? Yeah. Is the merchants getting richer right now? Is the merchants getting richer when when, when you go to the uh, pharmaceutical companies? Are yeah. they getting rich? Yeah, absolutely. Who's some of these merchants that that dealing with these pharmaceutical companies? Can we name any? Walmart. Walgreens. Walgreens. Mm -hmm. Rite Aid. Mm -hmm. CVS. CVS. Keep on going. It says, it says, it says, yeah. It says, verse 4 says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her. My people. God has people in his system. It's a system of all nations. Worldwide. All nations been made drunk by these false prophets, these false watchmen, these dirty birds. It says, and some of them are called cardinals, like Arizona cardinals, right? Mm -hmm. These are dirty birds. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. So if we don't come out of the system, that means we're going to be partakers be part of her sins. We're going to be partakers of it. Go down with it. And this is what the merchants are dealing with. The merchants of the earth are dealing with in Revelation 18, verse 11 to 13. The merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. For no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. And her is the Roman Catholic Church. 
idolatry, remember? Mm -hmm. Church and state. The merchants of gold and of silver, the precious stones and the pearls and the linen, the fine linen and the purple and the silk and the scarlet and all fine wood and all vessels of ivory mm -hmm. and all manner of vessels of most precious wood, wood and the brass and iron and marble and the cinnamon and the odors and the ointments, and the frankincense, and the wine, and the oil, and the fine flour, and the wheats, and the beasts, and the sheep, zoo, and the horses, and the chariots, and the slaves, and the souls of men. Let's go through this list again. The merchants of the weep shall weep and mourn. Matthew 24 talks about who they are. Let's turn there. Matthew 24, let's see. Matthew 24, verse 48 through 50. Matthew 24, verse 48 through 50. Can you read that, Lily? The merchants of the earth. Let's find out who they are. Another word for them. Jesus calls them this. This is Jesus speaking. Jesus speaking. What did he say? Read that loud. Matthew 24, 48 through 50. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of the servants shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with, hip, with the hypocrites, there shall be weeping and gashing of teeth. So that's an evil servant. That's an evil servant, and the Bible calls him a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. So a merchant, and they smiting their fellow servants, their fellow brethren. Mm -hmm. They're smiting them. Why is a black man treated with such hatred, scorn, and degradation? Because an evil servant is doing it. Most of the evil servants are the merchants of the earth. Mm -hmm. Can we say that? Did Jesus say it? Yeah. He says it's going to be weeping and gnashing teeth, and he calls it a hypocrite in our nation. Is that a Babylon's out there, bird? A hypocrite? Yeah. That's a dirty bird. That's an apostate pastor. But it's a whole system of them. It says, it says over her, mm -hmm. the ones they have in fornication with the Roman Catholic Church. For no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Did anybody buy them a Santa Claus hat this week? Or a Christmas tree? They done made the rich merchant of the earth rich. Okay? Christmas tree. It says, shall buy their merchandise anymore. Second Peter, Second Peter tells us some about their merchandise, who they're dealing in, who they're dealing in. Second Peter, Second Peter tells a little bit about their merchandise, who they what type of merchandise they're dealing in. Second Peter chapter two, verse three. Second Peter chapter two, verse three. You want to read that loud, Lily? Mm -hmm. Two verse three. Second Peter chapter two, verse three. Second Peter two verse three. What is their merchandise? These merchants of the earth, what are they dealing with? No one's buying their merchandise anymore. We better not be buying it either. And through covetedness shall they with frightened words same make, words. Same words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not. So they gonna make merchandise of who? You. So they're dealing with you. Slaves. They're dealing with you. The merchant of the earth, you're their merchandise. You are how they getting rich. Okay. That's what the Bible says. Revelation chapter 13 tells a little bit about this merchandise. Revelation chapter 13 tells a little bit about, more about this merchandise. Revelation 13 verse 17 tells us this. No man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Babylon is marketing the beast, the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. Babylonian system. If you don't know what the mark of the beast, it's not no computer chip. It's Sunday worship. worship. It's false worship. Okay? So that's their merchandise. They're pushing sun worship. That's why when you go to these holidays, 
They all fall on Sunday. Easter falls on Sunday. Mother's Day falls on Sunday. Father's Day falls on Sunday. Every year. Christmas, December 25th, the birthday of the sun god. Mm -hmm. Okay? So they're worshiping, they're practicing astrology, and that's what they're doing. And they're making a merchandise of you. Valentine's Day, all these holidays are dedicated to Lucifer, Satan, the devil. It says, no one buys their merchandise anymore. The merchandise of gold. The South Africa, one of the richest fields. Over 40% of all gold is mined there. Is that telling us why the black man getting persecuted so much? Mm -hmm. South Africa, who owns South Africa? Is black people down there? No. South Africa is white. Yes. Okay. But why are they there? What are they doing there? Merchants. They some merchants, right? Yeah. They getting real rich down there. South Africa. Shorts, they doing everything. 40% of all gold of the world is mined there. South Africa. And silver and precious stones. Have anybody ever heard of blood diamonds? Mm -hmm. Huh? Blood diamonds? All red diamonds. Where's blood diamonds found at? South Africa. Yeah. Africa? Okay. Pearls, linen, cotton. Where did this? Who got rich off of cotton? Of Louisiana, slave owners. Slave owners, right? Mm -hmm. Is that America? Yeah. And purple and silk. Silk is made in China. Do you know what China is? Japan. Do you know who China is in the Bible? Oh. It's a tribe called the Sinite tribe. Mm -hmm. Sinite. Sinite are Canaanites. Sinites are people of color, black people. Canaanites. Did we know that? China. That's where silk came from. Who's taking over all this? And scarlet, and all thine wood, and all manner of vessels of ivory. Ivory, that's from the African elephant. Mm -hmm. African elephant. And all manners of vessels of precious wood, and of brass, and of iron. But you use the iron, you make chains with iron, right? Mm -hmm. Handcuffs, and marrow, and cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil. Oil is also located in the land of Canaan. Canaan, black land. Okay? And fine flour and beast, we know that's a zoo. And sheep, that's Mesopotamia, that's Babylon. And horses, that's the Middle East also, that's the land of Canaan also. And chariots and slaves and souls of men. How do you deal in the souls of men? How are they dealing with the souls of men? Huh? How do you deal in the slaves and souls of men? Slaves. Slaves. Okay, we know slavery. But how do you deal in the souls of men? How are they dealing in the souls of men? What is a soul? How are they dealing in the souls of men? What is a soul? A soul is a person. No. What does the Bible say a soul is? Psalms 103. Psalms 103. Read that for me, Lily. A soul. It says they deal it in the slaves and the souls of men. Psalms 103, verse 1 and 2. Read that for me, brother. They're dealing in the slaves and the souls of men. We know slavery. We, we did, I did a presentation on slavery, but now we're looking at these souls. Right. The Bible just told us that they're making merchandise of who? Souls. You. Mm -hmm. Us. Read that. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Stop. All that is in what? Me. All that was in us. Everything that we made up is a soul. They can try to control, dictate every single thing you do. They dictate the way you look. They dictate the way you eat. They dictate the, the water you drink. They dictate everything. They dictate and controlling your mind. Your every step. They're controlling that. Finish reading that. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. So what they're trying to do, they're trying to get you to forget all his benefits. They're trying to erase God out of your soul. That's how they're dealing in the slaves and souls of men. They erase God out of your soul. Most people getting God erased out of their soul right now as we speak. On the Sabbath, what are most people doing? Are they thinking about God? Are they blessing God? 
They may say they're blessing God, but they're blessing their own heart, right? And who's providing that? The devil. The merchant of the earth. So now, instead of being church on Sabbath, where are you at? The beach. The what? Say it a little louder. The beach. The beach. What? Where else? Where else are you at? On the Sabbath. Are you blessing the Lord? Are you blessing the Lord? Are you the movies? Huh? They're not blessing the Lord. They're blessing their soul. With the merchants of the earth, they are in partakers with their sin. And God's calling us out of that. God's calling us out of that. That's how they're dealing with the slaves and souls of men. They got us captive in that bird's cage. A soul. Definition. Suchi. It's a spirit. Okay? Mm -hmm. An animal able to perceive feelings capable and capable of feelings. They said the slave were incapable of feelings. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? So they said that we didn't have a soul. And most people act like they don't got no soul now. It says life elements through which the body lives, feels, and principles of life manifested in the breath. The breath. Everything that you have. All the breath in you. When God made man, he breathed into him what? The breath of life. They're trying to take the breath of life out of you. You take the breath of life out of you, you in a depression. You're feeling just like this man right here. It says the seat of senses. The seat of senses. A soul. The Bible tells us we're supposed to guard the avenues of what? Our mind. Soul, our senses. We have five senses. He's trying to control every ap every part of the atmosphere we're in. Mm -hmm. Your senses. You're dictating the way you feel. Every aspect of your life. Your desire. Oh, I don't like God. I like chips. I don't like the health message. I like meat. Appetite. Perverting the appetite. The passions. Pornos, movies all over the place. Homosexuality. And the lower aspects of one's rational nature. The mind. So they're trying to control your mind. The word of God is trying to cure your mind. Soul. That's how they're trying to dictate us. Every aspect of your life. This is how Babylon, the system, is dealing with you. Making merchandise of you. Soul. Hebrews 4.12 says, this is what a soul, all that is in me is going to bless the Lord. So if it's not blessing the Lord, who is it blessing? Can we say bells above? If, if it's, two, oh, wow. it's two, two lords, right? So if it's not blessing the Lord, if your soul not blessing the Lord, who is it blessing? Who is it making happy? Happy is blessing, right? Happy is he. They are committing iniquity, right? Hebrews 4 verse 12. Read that. Hebrews 4 verse 12. And this word of God is not nothing nice. Take heed. Hebrews 4 12. Hebrews 4 12. Hebrews 4 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, piercing even the dividing as under of, a, under of soul and spirit. And the joints and marrow, and is a discerner, discerner of, of the thoughts. thoughts and intents of the heart. The goals of the heart. Whatever goals that heart is making, this merchants of the earth is trying to control that. They setting the goals for you. You see that? The intents of the heart. The word of God is quick and powerful. It tells us this, but a lot of times we don't want to believe it, do we? Do. Hebrews 4.12. It says the joint and marrow. Do we know what joint and marrow is? Blood cells. That's right. Joint and marrow. Is marrow blood? Mm, yeah. It's joint. Is that all that is within you? Yeah. They trying to tr control that. That's called DNA. Can we see that? That's called DNA. They trying to control your DNA. Do we know that? You see that? DNA is mm -hmm. dioxide bionuclear mm -hmm. acid. It is a molecule that carries the genetic instruction, or the genetic code is what they call it, mm -hmm. used in growth, human growth hormones, functioning and reproduction of all living development organs and viruses. 
So they controlling us. Because what do the merchants of the earth send us to when we get a virus? Go get vaccinated. Go get your flu shot, right? Run to the doctor for this and for that. That's how they control in your mind. God want us to come out of this mindset. We have people right now on drugs provided by the merchants of the earth. Matter of fact, the merchants of the earth just legalized marijuana. Right. You see that? We need to know these things. That's how they deal with the slaves and souls of men. It says, they're making them all slaves. They're slaves to marijuana. It says, and all the other drugs. Painkillers. Ornith ornithine and, and all this other drug medication that gets you addicted. It says, in the past decade, that's supposed to be in right there, seven African countries endured brutal civil conflicts fueled by diamonds. Do we know that? Is that what they're dealing in? Merchandise? Yeah. Africa, seven African countries endured brutal civil conflicts fueled by the diamonds. Got them starving. Sierra Leone, Liberia, Angola, Republic of Congo, Cote d'Ivoire, and Central Africa Republic, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. You find that in brilliant earth conflict in the diamond trade. So, where are these diamonds going to? The merchants. Look at some, some people need to be looking at their fingers and their earrings. Who's making them rich? Who's being partakers of their sin? 2 Corinthians. 2, 1 Corinthians 3, 5, 3 through 11. So when we building, okay, we've got to build upon a foundation. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We need to look at our fingers. Look at our necks, pearls. Is that some pearls on your neck? Some diamonds in your ear. Of course, cubic zirconius. But whatever it is, you're still making somebody rich. Yep. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. It says, For, matter of fact, verse 10, verse 10. It says, According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, as a wise master builder, this is Paul speaking, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereon. So it's saying you better be real careful how you build on the word of God. And that's what we're going to do, right? Mm -hmm. Right? It says you better take heed how you build. For no other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. It says, now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. Your work will be made manifest. It says, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by guess what? Fire. If our foundation is not laid upon Jesus Christ, if it's built upon money, we're going to be burned up. Is that what I'm saying? I don't want to take it out, take word or contact. It shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. So fire going to try your works. It says, if any man, if any man's work abide which he hath built thereon, he shall receive a war. Now, when we look at these gold and silver, we need to be building up on the, all these, all these, these, these materials we talking about. They're materials found in the earth, but they're also materials found in the sanctuary. It says, except for the the, the, the wood and the, except for the hay and the stubble. It says, if any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive reward. And if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But 
He himself shall be saved yet so by the fire. The fire, God is a consuming fire, right? If God is doing our soul, it's going to burn all this stuff up out of us. But if it's not burned out of us when he comes, we're going to be destroyed with the brightness of his coming. The Bible says, know ye not that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? That's that fire. That fire that dwells in our heart, right? It's supposed to, right? Unless it's been put out. It says, if any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. Mm -hmm. That fire going to destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temples ye are. Mm -hmm. So the Bible saying, come out of her, my people. This I say, lest any man should be doubted. I'm sorry. This I say, lest any man should beguile you. That's deceiving. Mm -hmm. With enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit. Join in beholding your order. And the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Rooted and built up and established in the faith. As ye have been taught. Abounding therein with thanksgiving. Beware. Lest any man spoil you. Mm -hmm. Lest cheat you. Poison you. Or give you a drug. Through philosophy. That's the love of knowledge. Mm -hmm. And vain deceit. That's worthless deceptions. After the tradition of men. You could say holy days. Holidays, mm -hmm. traditions of men, after the rudiments, that's the elements or the order, the new world order of this world and not after Christ. And we'll stop right here, okay? And we'll finish when we, when we get back, okay? So we're going to close with the word of prayer. And and this I say, lest any man should beguile you, as deceive you, with enticing words, for though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in the spirit, joying in beholding your order and steadfastness of your faith in Christ. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith. Rooted, not uprooted, in him, in the faith. As ye have been taught, have you have been, what, taught, have you been taught this? Abounding, that means excelling, therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy that's love of knowledge and vain deceit worthless babbling words deceit after the tradition of men that's holidays holy days after the rudiments that's ordering orders and elements of the world new world order and not after Christ let no man spoil you let's see what spoil what spoil what this word spoil is talking about Proverbs 31 11 can you read that? Proverbs 31 11. Let no one spoil you. If you're going to be a wise version or a foolish version, it depends on how, if, if the teachings of Christ, Jesus has been spoiled in you. If you teach a spoiled doctrine, that means you've been spoiled. Let's see what this is. Proverbs 31 11. Yes. The heart of her husband doeth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. So that means no philosophy is going to spoil, no human philosophy is going to supposed to spoil the teachings of Christ. That's a food, that's a wise virgin, that's a virtuous woman right there. Her husband is Lord Jesus Christ. It says her husband has no need of spoil. Safely trusting her. He's safely trusting her. So he safely trusts that she's going to be teaching what is supposed to be taught. And they're going to be excelling and abounding with thanksgiving. You see? 
He says, and spoil, spoil, spoil. What else spoil? Spoil and also poison. Okay? So poison is po so it's poison you. It'll poison your relationship with Christ. Like an opiate. An opiate will also do what to you? It'll make you sleep, right? Does opiate make you sleep? Yeah. An opiate will make you be a coma toast. Just like the foolish virgins, right? Mm -hmm. Well, all the virgins, they all slept. But now opiate will put you in a drug-like state. You won't know the truth when you hear it. And it'll be hard to wake you up out of it. Because it's addictive. That's Colossians 2, 4 through 8. That no man spoil you through new world orders or elements of the world. Let's look at uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 through 10. Let no man spoil you through vain philosophy. Through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of man, after the rudiments of the world. The word rudiments is elements. Mm. Elements. 2 Peter 3.10 2 Peter 3.10 Let no man spoil you through elements. An element can be powder. An element can be metal, wood, stone, mm -hmm. uh, diamonds, gold. Mm -hmm. Let no man spoil you. Minerals, uh, um, chemicals, elements. He, 2 Peter, can you read that out loud? 2 Peter 3.10-13 13, let no man spoil you through the rudiments, elements, or the orders of the world. The new but, world orders. It says, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, with the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The rudiments and the order shall melt with what? Fervent heat. Finish reading. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So the earth also is going to be burned up, right? His elements in the earth, all the elements in the earth, which we're supposed to be building on. And the works. And the works, the actions, the orders, the traditions of men, and the philosophies of men, and the lying deceits of men, and the drugs of men, elements, rudiments, orders, all going to be burned up. Now finish reading one more. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be? In all holy conversation. So our conversation needs to be what? Mm -hmm. Holy and in godliness. If we talking, if we promoting any of these things, then we are in trouble, right? Mm -hmm. That means we better wake we up. We need a conversion. We better wake up. Okay? And let's talk about one more thing, one more verse before before we move on. Before we move on. I want you to read verse, um, I'll read verse 1. It says, this is the second letter. Beloved, I now write unto you into both to stir up your pure minds by the way of remembrance. We should know these things. That ye may be mindful of the word which were spoken before by the holy prophets and of the commandments of the apostles of the Lord our Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers. Those are fools. Walking after their own lusts saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. It says, fools are saying that right now today. He said, oh, homosexuality, it been here. When the Bible tells it's going to be like the days of life, yeah, right before here. Jesus Christ comes. So it is that been here, but it ain't been here on this order. A worldwide, the law. Yeah. See, so so it says scoffer. So when you hear a scoffer, a scoffer gonna be telling you know what? Don't worry about what that what that word is saying. It ain't, it ain't saying that. It is saying this. And we gonna see what it's saying a little bit more. Let's keep on going. Matthew chapter twelve, verse twenty-five. This is Jesus speaking. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them. Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. That's obliteration. And every city or house, that's a community, mm -hmm. divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? His kingdom, his community, his house. 
stand. And if by Beelzebub, and if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your children cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. Okay? Therefore he, they shall be your judges. Who's going to be your judges? If you're saying that Jesus Christ cast out demons by Beelzebub, let's look and find out a little something about Beelzebub. Turn to 2 Kings um, 1 through 17. Let's turn, let's look and find a little something about Beelzebub. So I find out something, a little something about Beelzebub. Saying Jesus cast out demons by Beelzebub. Let's, let's see. That's, Second Kings, that's, 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 Second Kings, verse 1. Second Kings, verse 1. Chapter 1. Okay, what? Second Kings, chapter 1. I'm, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it too. I'm going to read it. Now, now David, wait, wait, wait. Second Kings, I'm in the wrong place. Let's get there. Second Kings, chapter 1. We're going to find out a little bit about Beelzebub. Do anybody know who Beelzebub is? Who's Beelzebub? The devil. Who's Beelzebub? Say it again. The devil. Yes, Beelzebub is the devil. A demonic. A devil. He's, he, he's called the Lord of the Flies. That means wherever he land, he's going to stank. He's the Lord of the Flies. He's the one who moves to and fro, here and there. He's always, everywhere. That's what he told Job, right? Where have you been? Walking up and down the midst of the earth. It says, verse 1 says, And Moab rebelled against Israel, after the death of Ahab, Ahab, you know Ahab is a wicked Israelite king. He says, and Ahaz, Ahaziah, that means the one who Jehovah upholds, that's what his name means, fell down through the lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria. This is the king also. He says, and was sick. So he was sick. The king of Israel was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Beelzebub. Go to Beelzebub. Should go to the uh, uh, go to the, the, the pharmacies. I'm gonna tell you, just say it right there. Go to Beelzebub, the god of Ekron. Whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messenger of the king of Samaria and say unto them is it not because there is not a God in Israel that you go to inquire of Beelzebub the God of Ekron Beelzebub is called the God of Ekron I'm going to tell you what Ekron means Ekron means obliteration that's what Ekron means it says now therefore thus saith the Lord thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up but thou shalt surely die, and Elijah departed. Mm. So the God of Ekron is the God of obliteration. He will so, he gonna and so, well. so that's that's what you're gonna do. So what we 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 so quick to go run to the doctor, the God of Ekron, forget about what God got to say. What God got to say? Yeah, turn everywhere but to God. And then look at this. Verse 5 says, And when the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto them, Why are you now turned back? And they said unto him, There came a man unto me, up to meet us, and said unto us, Go, turn again unto the king that sent you, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that thou sentest to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron? Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. Same thing he told Adam. And he said unto them, What manner of man was he that came to meet thee and told you these words? And they said, and they answered him, He was a hairy man. He had some dreads. Some locks. He was a hairy man and girded about a girdle about a girdle of leather about his loins, and he said, It is Elijah the Tishbite. And the king said to him, Fifty with fifty with his fifty. And he Elijah went up to him. Yes, he was. And behold, 
he sat on the top of a, of a hill, and he spake unto him, Thou art thou man of God, the king hath said, Come down. And so what he was trying to do, he was trying to intimidate Elijah. He said, Okay, we're gonna take us, take y'all 50 men down there. Y'all go tell Elijah to come here. He went and got the 50 of the best soldiers in his army and said, Send them down here. We're gonna intimidate you. Elijah was he outside looking all scared. Oh, the police outside. No, he didn't say that. This is what he said. Elijah answered and said to the captains of 50, If I be a man of God, then let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy 50. And there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his 50. It says, and again also, that's blasphemy. Now listen, and again, he sent unto him another captain of 50, trying to intimidate him. With his fifty. And he answered and said unto him, O man of God, thus hath the king said. The king said, What? Come, Come down, down quickly. quickly. Well, that's an order from the king, ain't it? Is that a commandment? Yes. That's a command. And Elijah answered and said unto him, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and my fifty. That's fifty one people. And fire of God came down from heaven and consumed him. And it's 50. They found the wrong king. They found the wrong king. And he sent again a captain of third 50 and his 50. And the third captain of the 50, he learned him a lesson. Went up and came. He didn't try to come intimidate him. All bold out there. And came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O oh, man of God, I pray thee, let my life and the life of these fifty thy servants be precious in thy sight. Yes, it's it. Behold, there came down fire from heaven to burn up the two captains of the former fifty with their fifties. That's 152 people. Therefore, let my life now be precious in thy sight. He didn't come bold. He says, And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, Go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him unto the king. And he said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, For as much, now, didn't, didn't I just tell you, Master, to tell you this? Now, now this is what he said. Elijah wasn't scared. Oh, I better be careful what I say to this king. He wasn't scared. He said, Thus saith the Lord. He said exactly what the Lord said. For as much as thou hast sent messengers to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of eradication, or those who are going to erase you or uproot you from the faith, is it not because there's no, no God, God in Israel, in Israel to, inquire to inquire of his word? Therefore, Therefore thou shalt not come down off of that bed on which thou art gone up, but thou shalt surely die. So he died according to the word of the Lord, which Elijah the prophet had spoken, and Jerome reigned in his stead. In the second year of Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. Now the rest of the acts of Azariah, which he did, are you not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Israel? So we see who Beelzebub is now, right? We know Beelzebub is the enemy of God. Why you can go to the enemy of God to get any type of information? So that means we go to uh, Chronicles and, and go look at the rest of the world. So we know who Beelzebub is now. Now, now they saying that they say that Jesus was casting out demons, devils, by the devil. It says, therefore, then he asks the question, why? It says, by whom do your children cast them out? Let's look at Revelation eighteen twenty three. Who do your children cast them out by? What is some type of diseases that people say is a uh, uh, they say, they say, cancer. Huh, no, yeah, cancer, cancer. But how, when they go to the doctor for a disease or anything, what do they give you? Do they give you some Ekron radiation treatment, chemotherapy. eradication, chemotherapy? They give you some radiation? Yeah. Is that Bill Bob? Yeah. Let's look at Revelation 18, verse, verse um, 23. This is what Jesus is saying right here. He says, who do your children cast them out by? So Jesus is saying, if I'm casting out devils by devils, 
Who are you casting? Shoot, you guys are the one casting out devils using devils. Mm -hmm. It says, verse 23 says, The light of the candle shall shine no more at all in me. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall shine no more at all in thee. For the merchants were the great men of the earth, and for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. The Bible says, Let no man deceive you. Ain't that what we just read? Now it says sorcery. Pharmakia. That word sorcery is pharmakia, which means medication. Now he's saying, Who do your, who do your children cast them out by? Mm -hmm. Pharmakia, right? That's medication. Isaiah 8 19 cells tells us that they cast them out by familiar spirits and wizards, demons. Okay? Now it says, therefore they shall be your judges. So demons are going to be your judges. They the ones that are going to judge you. It says, verse 28, Matthew 12, verse 28. says, but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Or else, how can one enter a strong man's house and spoil his goods? Let no man spoil you, right? They spoiling you through what? Vain philosophy and vain deceit. Love of knowledge. That's how they're going to come in your house. They're going to use intellectualism. They're going to use, they're they're gonna use education. education. Smart. They're going to use education. Smart. So that's the only way they can come in your house. If you don't know the word of God and you rejected the teaching of God, then they're going to come in your house with their education and they're going to spoil your goods, make you rotten, make you run to Beelzebub, spoil his goods. Except he first bind the strong man and then he will spoil his house, his church, and take his community. So first you got to bind the strong man to come in. Matthew 12, read verse Matthew 12 first tells us how this binding goes on. Matthew 12, read your time around 12, 43 through 45. Where are we? So we're looking at spoil, remember? When the spoil unclean spirit philosophy. Go ahead, read. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and finding none. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with him himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last and the last state of that man is worse than the first. He says that man's mind is tore up. Even so shall it be also. Until, these wicked, until this wicked generation. So it says that strong man has to be bound. If you're bound, what does that mean? Are you in chains? Yes. Are you a slave? Trapped. Are you a slave to drugs? Huh? Are you a slave to drugs? Mm -hmm. It says that last state. That state means that's a mindset. Mm -hmm. That mind is tore up through these drugs. Demons have entered into this man and into this nation right here, Israel. And the last state was worse than it was the first. It was brought to obliteration, the last, desolation, ekron. The last state was worse the than last the first. The last state. You see that? Matthew chapter 13. Abraham? Binding, binding that slavery. So what we want to do, we don't want to be captive into that cage of that unclean and evil bird. Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Verse 30. Read that. It says, let both grow together until the harvest... And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, gather you together the first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them. But gather the wheat into my barns. Okay, so you got two people being gathered. One being gathered into bundles, being bound into bundles. That means slaves. They're being slaves. You know what we talked about earlier. How are they going to be dealing with slaves and the souls of men? They're going to make them captive through their elements, their drugs, their pharmacia. Can we see that? Can we see that? And so they're being gathered through uh, intellectual knowledge, intellectualism, through vain philosophy and through traditions of men. Philosophy and vain deceit. Intellectualism. Knowledge, love of knowledge, education. 
Okay? Now, it says, and then he will spoil his goods. That's how they get spoiled, right? Mm -hmm. So that's the only way you're going to spoil. That's what Jesus was saying with Canaan. What the children of Israel did, they went down to Alexandria, Egypt, and went got to some degrees down there and came back and spoiled all the people. And so now Jesus had to come and try to clear up some of this, this confusion that was going on with this nation before they was cut off. Before he cleared it up, they had to kill him. And they cut themselves off. They totally obliterate themselves, separate themselves from Christ. It says, He that is not with me is against me. It says, He that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. So he's saying either you're with me or you're against me. If you're not with me, you're scattering. Are we scattering God's people? Are we helping scatter them? Or are we trying to draw them to Christ? Do the truth. Are we enslaved slavery? Huh? Are we addicted to these drugs? Jesus says, are we addicted to Beelzebub's uh, uh, doctrine? It's a question we need to ask ourselves. The Bible says examine yourself, right? Scatter for broad. Matthew 26 verse 31 tells us this. Matthew 26 verse 31. Matthew 26, verse 31. Verse 31. He says, He that is not, he that gathereth not with me, scatter. Have we been scattering or has we been bringing people to the truth? That's what we need to ask ourselves. He says, Then said Jesus unto them, All ye shall be offended because of me. This night, for it is written, I will smite the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. Have we been smiting Jesus? Have we been smiting the truth? Zechariah, Zechariah, verse 13, verse 7 tells us this. Zechariah 13, verse 7 tells us this. Can somebody read, somebody turn to John, John 10. Uh, nine, why don't we the next phone turn here? Zechariah, Zechariah 13, 7. Zechariah 13, verse 7 tells us this. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. And I will turn mine hand upon the little ones. Okay? Read, read uh, John 10, 9. So it says, if you're not with me, you're against me. If you're not gathering with me, you're scattering the sheep. So if we're scattering sheep, that means we might be the shepherd. The shepherd is Jesus Christ. Everybody know the psalm. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, right? But they constantly smiting the shepherd. And his sheep. John. John chapter 10. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. And shall go in and out and find pasture. 10. It says, The thief cometh not, but to steal and to kill and to destroy. Is that spoil? Yeah. Is that spoil? So the thief, Jesus says, If you're not with me, if you're not gathered with me, you're a thief. Can you say that? He says, you coming to spoil, right? And what they say we're using for spoil? Intellectualism, right? Vain philosophy. I mean, philosophy and vain deceit. She says that they're a thief, right? John chapter 14, verse 30. John 14, verse 30. Jesus says it's a thief. A thief coming to smite the shepherd and scatter the sheep. And and Jesus says, if you're not with me, you're against me. He's talking to Israel. Israel. John chapter 14, verse 30 tells us this. John Hereafter, 14, verse 30. I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and has nothing in me. So Jesus is saying, if you're, not, if you're not gathering with me, you don't have nothing in him. Because you're with the prince of this world. The order of this world. The new world order, right? The rudiments, the elements of this world. 
So if we're not teaching the word of God, if we're not holding on to what God is teaching us, we're right along there with the prince of this world. Daniel chapter 9, 26. Daniel 9, 26. And someone turned to Daniel 8, 23. Daniel, so we're going to find out who this prince of this is, and we don't want to be on that team. We don't want to be on that team with them cardinals and dirty birds. We don't want to be on that team, do we? I hope you don't. That team got a little bit of money, though. You know that? Daniel 9, 26. Okay, so Daniel chapter 9, verse 26. It says, the prince of this world comes. Jesus says, the prince of this world comes and have nothing in me. The prince of this world has a king over him. And the king name is Beelzebub, the lord of the flies. Satan, the god of irradiation, chemotherapy. Daniel. Daniel 8, 23. I mean, Daniel 9, 26 tells us this. And after three scores and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. Stop. Is that scattered right there? You see that? That's might. You see that? That's a prophecy. Finish reading, Lily. But not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy. That's Rome. Shall do what? Destroy the city. In 70 AD. Keep going. And the sanctuary. And the sanctuary. That's the house of God. Jesus said. A house, it says, that every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Jesus Christ was bringing division when he came to Israel. Separation separates the thieves from the sheep, the wheats and the tares. And it was a time of harvest when he came. Okay? Finish reading, Lily. And the end thereof shall be with the flood. Shall be with the flood, a flood of ungodly men. Okay? Now, I want you to read Daniel chapter 9, verse, I mean Daniel 8. Talk about this king. This king, this prince that was coming to destroy Israel. Daniel 8, verse, we're going we to read this right here. Because this king was a wicked, wicked king. This is the king who started slave, that brought slavery in. This king. This king is a system of kings. A system of kings. Daniel 8, verse, I'm going to start at verse 22, I'm going to read it says, now that being broken, whereas four stood up. This is talking about Alexander Great being dying. Four stood up. He had four generals. Mm -hmm. Four generals. What's his four general's name, Robert? Um, the Ptolemy, uh -huh. the Seleucus, the Sandia, That's right. But let me start at verse 20. It says, the ram which thou saw of having two horns are, are the kings of Mede and Persia. That's Medo Persia. Okay? That's on an idol. That's the brass. That's the that's the, that's the silver chest. And the rough goat is the king of Greece. The rough goat is who? King of Greece. What's his name? Alexander the Great, right? And the great horn that's between his eyes is the first king. That's Alexander the Great. It said, "Now that being broken, when he died, whereas four stood up for it, four kingdoms shall stand out of the nation, but not in his power." It's going to be somebody else, not under his children. He says, and in the latter times of their kingdom, when the transgressors are come to full, uh -oh. What's our time? a king of fierce countenance. That means fierce, that's like a lion, huh? That's wrong there. A fierce counsel appearance and understanding dark sentences. If you understand dark sentences, you think, is that education? Yeah, you should stand up shall stand up and his power shall be mighty mm. but not by his own power it's by the power of Beelzebub mm. he came and smite the, sh the shepherd and scattered the sheep and the children of Israel helped scatter the sheep they would chase them every time they were preaching the gospel it says and he shall destroy wonderfully that means like no one else on this planet destroy wonderfully. and he shall prosper and he shall practice mm -hmm. he's going to practice all his witchcraft sorcery and he shall destroy the mighty and the holy people. They're attacking God's people. That's the sheep. That they're scattering. The thief. It says, and through his policy, that's his laws, his commands, his policies, his orders, his rudiments. Also, he shall cause craft. That's witchcraft. That's priestcraft and that's statescraft. Shall prosper in his hand. 
and he shall magnify himself in his heart, and by peace he shall destroy me. Obamacare. Peace, really unity. Okay. By peace, we shall just, he shall destroy me. You guys need to get uh, Medicare. You get Medicare, Medicare, because what we're going to do, we're going to vaccinate you. We're going to give you some shots, and we're going to destroy you. But you think we're doing you good. You think you think we're peaceful to you. You think that, that, that we're, but we're a, a wolf in sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm. Okay? We're going to give you some bells above, um, uh, uh, some bells above medication. It says, shall destroy many and shall also stand up against the prince of princes, antichrist, but he shall be broken without hands. Jesus. Without hands. It says, and the vision of the evening and the morning, which was told you the 2300 days, is true. Is true. Wherefore shut thou the vision, for it shall be for many days. That's 1260 years. Times, book. times, and the line of times. Okay? So that's talking about the man of sin. In that time period, the black man was being destroyed, along with the Israelites at the same time period. And we'll get into that further on. It says, so we know that that thief is scattering the sheep. And we don't want to be on the thief team. The Bible calls us to come out of them, right? Come out of her, my people, right? And we don't know. If we don't know who the prince of this world is, the Bible says the prince of this world has blinded the minds of them. We'll get there later. It says, Wherefore, this is what Jesus says, If I say unto, I say unto you, All manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. If a man puts himself in the place of the Holy Ghost, is that blasphemy? Yeah. If a man puts himself in the place of Jesus Christ, is that blasphemy? If a man is called Holy Father or Reverend, is that blasphemy? Yeah. This man of sin and this thief that stand up against the Prince of Princes is the Antichrist, which is the Roman Catholic hierarchy, the church system, the papacy, the Vatican. It says, that sin is not going to be forgiven. It says, and whosoever shall speak a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him. Neither in this world, neither in the world to come. That means they're going to be judged today. God's calling us out of that false system right there. This is a promise. This is a promise. Remember this promise. It says, We have nothing to fear for the future except we forget the way the Lord has led us and His teachings led us and His teachings in our past history. That's a promise. Okay? Is that the way he led us? We don't have nothing to fear if we believe this. You see this? He says, I know that whatsoever God doeth it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it. And God doeth it that men should fear before him. Fear be purified before him. That which hath been is now. That which is to be have already been and God requires that which is past if you don't know your past you are bound to repeat it Ecclesiastes 3 14 and 15 do you see that? Yeah. and we'll close here we'll you don't study your history mind you go, you go cure 3 that's why, that's why this is our history cure yeah. 3 yeah. if you don't Know your past. Bound, you bound to repeat. Yeah. That's why this is our history. Book. That's why the Bible right. says it's given for the proof. Yes. Not true. That's why. And correction. And correction. That's, That's what why God we wants to know. God wants us to we come do. out of her and don't have no parts of her. We're living in a system. Our education system is all corrupt. It's all by Beelzebub. It's all by Beelzebub. We're running the whole world. We're controlling the whole world. So God wants us to start, Everything belongs. we have to learn, let's start studying these things, and then we won't be deceived. That's philosophy. They control all the merchants of her cup, all the way around. This is your cup? No, that's hers. Okay, let's take a break. Let's pray real quick. And Father, we thank you once more for these precious truths. Thanks, Father, that you continue to 
align our minds, help us to continue to learn, and help us to absorb this stuff. It's a lot of information. So I'd like that you help us to take a picture and study at home so we can continue to grow in you, in the truth. We ask that Father to give us more light. And it's all these things in Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. It says, we have nothing to fear for the future except as we forget the way the Lord has led us in the past, in His teachings in our past history. That means we have to know our past history as Seventh-day Adventists and as Bible-believing Christians. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, nor anything taken from it, and God doeth it that men should fear before Him. That which hath been is now, that which is to be hath already been, and God requires that which is past. Please ask 3, 14, and 15, and Life Sketches 1, 96. So history will be repeated. If we don't understand the history of slavery, we are going to be brought back into slavery. And if we don't understand the history of slavery, it means that we may still be in slavery. So that's how, remember, Babylon is dealing in the slaves and the souls of men. They're dealing with us through the education. So we have to be re-educated through the Word of God. Mind Cure 3, Revelation chapter 18, verse 23 says, The light of the candle shall shine no more at all in me. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more all in thee. For the merchants were the great men of the earth, and for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. Now what we're going to do, we're going to break down this verse. We found out what the merchants are dealing with and what they're dealing in. The souls, slaves and souls of men. We found out what a soul was, right? The soul is everything that's within us, every detail of our life. And so now, the Bible says, if we don't come out of this mindset of thinking, if we don't wake up and our minds get cured through the Word of God, through the Holy Ghost, this is what will happen. This is a warning. The light of the candle. What is a candle? What is a candle? The Bible tells us this. The light of the candle. Anybody know what a candle is? Anybody know what a candle is? The church. See, we need to know these things. Candle is up. Uh, we need to know the, these things. The we don't know these things in me, and our candle might be out, right? Right? Yeah, right. Could mean that. Right? It can mean that. But it might be giving ready a spark, right? Right? If we don't understand this message, that means our light might be out. Because candles, this candles, message candles, is given to the church, shall right? Shine no more at all, indeed. So the light of the candle. And shall so shine remember, no we got, we got, remember we That's got, remember we got, remember we got, we got five versions, right? That's five were wise and spirit. five were foolish. They all had lamps. Mm -hmm. With no oil. Five had oil. Five didn't have no oil. Yeah. The light of the candle shall, shall shine spirit. no more at all in me. This is Babylon. God's calling us out of Babylon, right? Babylon is a system, a religious system, a political and religious system. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27 says this. This is what a light of a candle is. Proverbs 20, verse 27, it says this. It says, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. You see that? Listen to this. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. It's the breath of life that God gives us, right? The spirit of man is a candle of the Lord. Searching all the inward parts of the belly. The belly is the mind. This is mind cure, right? The belly. All that is in me. The spirit of the Lord searching the soul. All that was in us. If the spirit of the Lord is no longer searching in our soul, then that means... Our candle might be put out, right? The Spirit of the Lord, what does it do? Its job is to convict us of sin, of judgment, and of righteousness. Three things. 
if we are no longer being convicted by this message, our candles might be out. Okay? So it's God's Holy Spirit working in the heart of man, creating into us a clean heart, renewing a new spirit within us. Okay? That's the Spirit of the Lord. It says, the, the light of the candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And Proverbs 24, verse 20 tells us this. Can you read that, Robert? Proverbs 24, verse 7. Remember, we got two types of two types of women. We got the wise virgin and the foolish virgin. At the time of the harvest. Can you read verse 24, verse um, verse uh, 18. I mean verse 20. Or 20. It says, uh, for there shall no for there shall be no reward to the evil man. No reward to the evil man. That means the evil servant or the foolish virgin. Keep going. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. If we're not examining ourselves, mm -hmm. and the Bible says the light of the candle, that means we're going to be checked on the wicked side, on the evil servant side, on the servant that says, my Lord, the Lord is coming. That means we're living like he's not coming. Check, wicked servant. You see that? Mm -hmm. It says, Proverbs 31, verse 18. Proverbs 31, verse 18. Got two servants, a wise servant and a foolish she servant. that her merchandise is good. That's the wise servant. Her candles go not out by night. So God has some wise servants. He mm -hmm. said they candles do not go out by night. We're living in darkness, right? Gross darkness if we don't understand this message. Right? Mm -hmm. But the Bible says the wise virgins, they candle is not going to go out during the night. Mm -hmm. So God's going to put, this is the last message, God's going to put some candles out. And God has been putting candles out. And God is lighting up some candles too at the same time. Mm -hmm. It says, and the voice of the bridegroom. Who's the bridegroom? Right. Christ. Look at Luke 5, 24. The if they're not listening to the voice of the bridegroom, we talked about the bride, bridegroom right. earlier. If they're not listening to the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride, and, and, and of the bride it's not going to be heard. Be heard no more that means that they're not going to hear the voice of Jesus Christ. The third, second, first, second, third angel message. They ain't going to hear that voice. Matthew, Luke 5, 34. Read that, Robert. 5, 34. It says, and he said unto them, Canst thou make the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with him? So the bride chamber, we've got to make sure we're in that bride chamber. We make sure we're in that bride chamber. How do we be in the bride chamber? I surrender. How do, where is the bride chamber? By faith. By faith. We be in the bride chamber by faith. But we got to know where the bride chamber is, right? Where did the foolish virgin, where did the wise virgins go? In Matthew 25, where did they go? They went into the bride chamber and the door was shut. They went there by faith. Okay? They went there by faith. The foolish virgins, they came. They said, open unto us. He said, no. And then at first they came and said, you know what? Give us the oil. Our lights have went out. And what did they say? They said, not so. You need to go to them that buy. Mm -hmm. sell it and buy some more. And get your own. We can't give you none. We cannot transfer our character to you. Mm -hmm. We cannot give you the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, you got to get that on your own. The Bible tells you to ask. You need to be asking for it right now. Okay? The bridegroom and, and, and the bride chamber. So the bride chamber is in heaven. You got to understand something about the sanctuary to understand the bride chamber. That's the fundamental teachings of Christianity, Seventh day Adventists. It says, read that one more time, Luke 5 24. And he said unto them, Can ye make the, the children of the bride chamber fast while the bridegroom is with him? Okay, so the bridegroom is with them on earth. That was Jesus Christ. He's not on earth no more. The Bible says, Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. Right? Is that a prayer? Yeah. Jesus Christ is in heaven. And we need to know what he's doing in heaven and what he's doing in that chamber and what chambers he's in. Okay? We know there's two chambers. They're the, host, the holy place and the most holy place, right? Mm -hmm. 
And Jesus Christ, he's moving, he's doing work in that chamber. But he's not in one chamber, he's in another chamber now. And that's when he went into that chamber, the doors were shut. And if we don't know what the work he's doing, we don't know where he is, and we don't have no certainty to our future. We are without hope if we don't understand his message. And that means our light may be out. Luke, uh, uh, and also, and the voice of the bride shall be heard no more in all these. Where's the bride at? Who's the bride? Is the bride us? Yes. Are we the bride? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yes. Are we the bride? Yes. If we the bride, how are we going to be in the bride chamber? Are we the bride? Let's look and see what the bride is. Turn to Revelation chapter 21, verse 9. Revelation 21, verse 9. Bride. Who is the bride? Yeah. 21, verse 9. Is the bride to church? Yes. Is the bride to church? Revelation 21, verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither. I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. The bride is the Lamb's wife, right? Mm -hmm. Who said this? An angel said, I'm going to show you this, right? Mm -hmm. He talked with me, he said, I'm going to show you. Now read verse 10. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Where is the, where is the bride? Where is the bride? heaven that's right so are we the bride no. we are guests mm -hmm. we are guests right we're invited right let's turn to matthew chapter 22 real quick we're we're guests matthew chapter 22 we're guests right matthew what matthew 22 we are the guests right yes so we are invited to heaven we are invited to accept these three inch messages by faith Okay, because the Spirit said that. He told him the bride is coming down from heaven, right? Mm -hmm. That's talking about our glorious future. Mm -hmm. Matthew 22. It says, I'm going to read this, okay? Mm -hmm. I'm going to start from verse 1. Jesus answered and spake unto them again a parable and said, A parable is an object lesson. It says, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a certain king which made a marriage for his son. His son is the son of man. Okay? And he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden, that were invited to the wedding. Are we invited to a wedding? Yeah. And they would not come. You hear that? They would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, that's the sacrifice, my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. Is that the bridegroom? Is that the bride inviting? Yes. Is that the bride inviting? Yes. Come. To the marriage. But they made light of it. Oh, he don't know what he's talking about. They made light of it. And went their ways. They went to the where, Tyrone? Their ways. Went their ways. Where is that? At the beach? Yeah. yeah. The movies. The movies. One to his farm, another to his merchandise. Mm -hmm. Merchants. Other to his merchandise. Mm -hmm. He says, And the remnant took his servant. Who took his servants? The remnant. <laughs> the remnant. Sure. The remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. The remnant killed the prophets? Yep. But when the king heard of it, when the king heard of, he was wroth. And he went and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. That happened in 70 AD. But if we fail to understand our history and the way the Lord led us in the past, it's going to happen to us. Too. It says, then 
-hmm. Then said he to his servants, the wedding is ready. The wedding is what? Ready. ready. We better be ready, right? But they which were bidden were not worthy. All the people that invited, they're not worthy. They're not coming. A decision has been made upon them. The lights have been put out. It says, Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find bid to the marriage. The highways, that's the high places of the earth. That's where kings, rich people are. It says, So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together. Jesus says, If you're not gathering with me, you're scattering, right? Uh -huh. Gather together all, as many as they found. Everybody's invited. Both good and bad. Oh, you evil, you did some bad stuff, you invited too. Come on. It's ready. The wedding is ready. But those who, that, those people that was over there that were supposed to be giving his message, they ain't invited no more. They ain't even worthy. They had their chance to prove that they were worthy, but they ain't worthy no more. So I, what I want, y'all go, everybody, invite them all in. Uh -huh. Some people gonna come, some people ain't gonna come. It says, and the wedding was furnished with guests. You see that? We are the guests in the uh -huh. chamber. You see that? It says, and when the king came in to see, that's, in, that's uh, investigative judgment. The time we're living in right now, we're living in the time period of the investigative judgment. Where God is seeing and checking us. And we don't know because it's called the time of judgment. Mm -hmm. The king came in to see the guests. And he saw there a man that had uh, not on a wedding garment. That means this man, God gave him everything he needed to be have to be furnished with his, with his wedding garment. But he despised the voice of the bridegroom, he despised the light, and he despised the bride. Where the message was coming from. It says, and he said unto him, friend. Did he say enemy? He said friend. That's a church member. Mm -hmm. Was Judas, he called Judas a friend? Why I portrayed you mean with a kiss? He said, friend. How camest thou in hither not having on a wedding garment? And he was speechless. So he did not have on a wedding garment. Why do you think he didn't have on a wedding garment? Because he wasn't an invited guest. Yes, he was. Good and bad was invited, right? The hardest, the prostitutes, didn't say they were going to the city before a lot of us. He got there another, it says he got there another way. He didn't get there the way. Christ no, he no, him. he got there the right way, because he was in the wedding chamber. Rough. He was a friend. Mm -hmm. It's like Judas. Judas wasn't invited though, but he just came in. But what he did, it says he despised. He despised the garment. Mm -hmm. The garment was righteousness and salvation. Jesus Christ was trying to clothe them with righteousness and salvation, but they had something to do. They had to accept it, receive it. And put it on. You see? God furnished the gifts. He furnished the dress. You don't have to go spend nothing. You don't have to go buy nothing. You see that? Yeah. But it says he was speechless. Because when it was given, he was in there treating the message lightly. Now listen to this. Then said the king to his servants, these are angels. Then said the king to his servants, these are angels. Bind him Hand and foot, make him a slave. Mm -hmm. Is that what you do? Mm -hmm. Shackle him, hand and foot. Mm -hmm. Take him away. And cast him in the outer darkness. And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Bind him. Is that slavery? <laughs> God made him a slave to the enemy. Darkness. Now his mind is captivated by demons. You want to find out where this darkness is? Let's turn to Jude. Cast him in the order of darkness. Turn to Jude. We're going to look and see where this other darkness is and what's there, where he's cast out. And so, if, if, if we don't want to be cast out there. I'm going to tell you that right now. Jude, what? Jude. Jude, the book right before Revelation. Revelation. Mm -hmm. Jude. This is what's in this outer darkness where he's getting cast out. And he's going to be grinding and gnashing the teeth. He's going to be out. Uh, ooh, it's hard. It's gonna be he gonna, his hand's going to be on his head like this. You see that? That's depression. It says... It says, 
verse verse 6 it says and the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation their own home in heaven he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day they're cast That's out make fire. now demons no they're cast out and now demons is in their atmosphere all around them. demons are directing their minds until they get into that lake of fire so it's some national teeth. That's some national teeth right there. There's going to be mind control. You see? That's national teeth. So it says, the voice of the bride shall be heard no more on me. So the voice, this voice is coming from heaven. It says, for the merchants were the great men of the earth. They're controlled by these demons. These angels that left their first estate. They're worshiping them. Most people are worshiping them right now. It says, for by thy sorceries, were all nations deceived. That means all nationalities. Black, white, Chinese, whatever you want to call yourself. Black, black, Blasians, whatever you want to call yourself. All nations were deceived. But Jesus says, Luke 9 to 56. It says, for the Son of Man has not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. And they went to another village. So this message is to save us, right? right? It's not to depress us, it's to save us. But it depends on if we message, if we receive it, right? Mm -hmm. What happened when they went to that village? They was like, we don't want you over here, Jesus. So when they said, we don't want you over there, they went on to another village, going to the highways and highways. You said, don't destroy him. John didn't want to destroy him, remember? You want us to call down some fire from heaven and destroy him? Jesus said, no. So I ain't come to destroy me as I don't come to save him. Maybe they might have another opportunity later. We don't know. Maybe they'll come out of that village and be saved. But Jesus said, don't kill him. Okay? And so that's what we're supposed to remember. Pharmakia, the word sorcery, 5.33.31. It tells us pharmakia is from 5.31. It means what? What's that word? Medication. You know, come destroy men's lives just to save them. What does that word mean? Pharmacy, medication. Medication. Magic. Okay? It means magic. Literally, sorcery and witchcraft. Medication. God does not want our minds medicated by videos. Okay? We get my mind medicated by videos, right? Yeah. By things that we're not supposed to put in our body, right? And also by the voices of men. Neuro-linguistic programming, mm -hmm. hypnotism, witchcraft, dark speeches. Remember we talked about in Daniel chapter uh, 8, mm -hmm. understanding dark sentences? Uh, pharmakias, this is where the word comes from. It means pharmacon, it means a drug. Do we know what drugs are? Huh? What does pharmakia sound like? Does it sound like pharmacy? Is that what the merchants of the earth are dealing with? We got Rite Aid, Walmart, CVS, pharmakia, hospitals, pharmacies. It says druggist. It means a drug or a spell-giving potion. A spell-giving potion. Okay, we don't like to think of a, a, a marijuana as putting a spell on you, do we? Do we? The marijuana good, right? Mm -hmm. That's what you tell us? Mm -hmm. God created marijuana, didn't he? It's yeah. from the earth. It's from the mother earth, right? Mm -hmm. The Bible says it's a drug. The Bible says it's witchcraft, and the Bible says it's, it's, not, it's, 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 it's so called medication. Okay? If we'll dull your pen, if we'll dull your brain. That's what it's going to medicate. It's going to medicate and kill your brain cells. It says a druggist. What's a druggist? Who cast spells? Witches. Huh? Witches and warlocks. Okay, a poisoner. Is a poisoner a spoiler? Mm -hmm. The Bible says they don't have to spoil you through education, right? Mm -hmm. Philosophy mm -hmm. and vain deceit, right? A poisoner. A magician or sorcerer. Okay? Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 24. 
a magician or a sorcerer? Deuteronomy chapter 32. We're living in a time of the end, right? Right? So in the time of the end, God has something for those who lights is going to go out. It's something though. So 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 let's we'll see let's we'll see what that is. Deuteronomy chapter thirty-two, verse twenty-four. Verse twenty-four. You gonna read that, Lily? They shall be burnt with hunger, and be devoured with burning heat, and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of the beast upon them. The beasts are nations, right? With the poison of the serpents of the dust. That's spiritualism. Poison of the serpents of the dust. The serpents is spiritualistic teachings. Read verse 16. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods, with abominations, abominations, abominations provoked they him to anger. So by taking stuff that's abominable, it makes God angry. Read the next verse, Lily. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, they knew the to new gods that came with new that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. You see that? Read the next verse. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art of unmindful. That means they don't even know who that is. That means they lied just put out. And has forgotten God that formed thee. You see that? Mm -hmm. So it says that they are sacrificing to devils. When you take these drugs, this medication, it means you're worshiping the devil. Right? Mm -hmm. You're sacrificing your brain to the devil. You see that? Yep. It says this right here. Yeah. Verse 25. Verse 25 says, Then the sacrifice they mind to the devil. He says, the sword without and terror within. That means that within that brain, they're going to be terrorized. They're going to be seeing some demons. Okay? Uh -huh. They're going to be having hallucinations. The Bible says, bless the Lord all my soul and all that is within me. They're going to have terror within. They're going to be paranoid. Uh -huh. Schizophrenic. It says this right here. It says, terror within shall destroy both Young men and the virgin. Young men and the daughter. And the suckling also with right. the man of gray hair. That's mean that they have no all. pity. That's right. That means it's going to be told. That means generations are going to be affected. Everybody going to be The young men, that's the teenager, the baby, and the old man. All the way. Generations. That's three generations. You see that? It says, it says, this is what God says he's going to do. And I will all, and, and, and said I, verse 26, I will scatter them into the corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. God says, I'm going to lot them out. They don't even know who they are. It says, were it not that the Lord were it not that I feared the wrath of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely. Why are your enemies acting so bold? Lest they should say, our hand is high, for the Lord have not done all this. It says, for they are a nation void of counsel, no light. Uh -huh. Neither is there any understanding in them. They don't understand this. And that's how they're trying to get us. We keep watching this stuff, we ain't going to understand this. And that's what we're doing. Our parents, everybody watching the T.D. Jakes and all these other false prophets on TV, and they don't understand this. And they ain't able to get it. It says, Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this. That they will consider their latter end. It says, "How could one? How should one chase a thousand, and two ten, and, and two put ten thousand to flight? How two people gonna cause ten thousand people to run? Except their rock 
with a capital R, had sold them in the slave. And the Lord has shut them up. For their rock, their Jesus, is not our rock with a capital R. Even our enemies themselves being judges. It says, Jesus said they're going to judge you, right? Isn't that what he said in Matthew 20? Matthew 12? He says your enemies yourself, they're going to be your judges. If you cast them out by this, right? By demons. It says, for their vine is not is the vine of Sodom. Mm -hmm. Their vine is vine of Sodom. Mm -hmm. That's LBGT. Mm -hmm. If we need to have a, 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 a new age, I mean a, 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 a better translation to it. L G V T A B C D Q D Z, whatever. Sodom. It says, and their fields of Gomorrah. Their world is the world of Gomorrah. What they telling you right now with the churches? Let them come in. Mm -hmm. Let them come in. They their grapes. Their grapes are grapes of gall. That's medicine. That's poison. That's drugs. That's pharmacia. That's sorcery. It says, and their clusters are bitter. Spoils. Spoils. Let man spoil. Let no man spoil. You see that? Bitter. It says, their vine is the poison. That's what sorcery is, right? Is that pharmacia? It says, their vine, their wine is poison of the dragons. Who's the dragon? Satan. Satan. It's Satan's doctrine. Wine is doctrine. Oh, yeah. It's Satan's doctrine. Yeah. It says, in first of all, and the cruel venom of the poisonous Serpent, you could say the black mamba. Mm -hmm. Black people like calling this out there. It's down, listen to this. It says, Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? All this stuff was sealed until a time. Mm -hmm. What time do you think it was let loose? 1844. Spiritualism versus on mm sin. -hmm. At the end of the 2300 day prophecy. And it says, for the Lord shall judge his people, the hour of the judgment, and repent himself for his servants. When he see that their power is gone, and there's none shut up and left. So that's what's shaking right there. You see that? Is it shaking? So that's what that pharma key is. For God ain't called to God can save us, not destroy us. Okay? So we'll stop here. Special report. What time is it? Six o'clock. Is that right? Fifteen more minutes. Okay. Any questions on that one? Any questions on that one? Okay. So, yeah, I do have a question. So you said that um, the bride was in heaven. And we were the guests. Yes. Who is the bride? The bride? Mm -hmm. The bride is the church. The okay. church in heaven. Let's turn to Galatians. Answer your question. Galatians. The bride and the bride, you know. You know, say, see who the bride is. Who the bride is? The bride is Jesus. Okay, well, who The bride, right? Yeah, but we didn't read that. We read, we, we only found out who the, um, who right. that we were the guests. Okay, so let's, let's turn, turn to Galatians chapter 4. Galatians chapter 4. So the bride is the one who calls the guests. So the bride is calling the guests. To choose. So you see, look at, make sure we look at this right here, Lily. See? It so says they're not going to hear the voice of the bride. So we know that the bride cannot be the church, and if we don't know who to, if we don't, if we don't, if we're not connected with the bridegroom, there's no way we can be the, the bride. You see, because the bride is coming down from heaven. Mm -hmm. okay. Galatians chapter four. We want to understand this though. It, verse twenty-one. It says, "Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law." Verse twenty-one. Tell me, ye that desire to be under the law. Do you hear the law? Do you 
not hear the law. Yeah, do you not hear the law? For it is written. It says, for it is written. Abraham, Abraham had two sons, one a bondmaid and the other a free woman. Mm -hmm. It says, but he who was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh. Okay? But he of the free woman was by the promise. That was, um, which things are an allegory. An allegory is an object lesson. So what happened to Ishmael and, and Isaac is an allegory of what's going on. One person was born by the flesh. It's man's working. Abraham and Sarah, they said, they'll go over there and have sex with her because we can't wait for the promise. They don't, they don't so so, so let's go try to help God out. And what they did, they made a, 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 the, the enemy of God. It says, it says, for these things are an allegory. For these are the two covenants. Remember I was talking about we got a new covenant? One of We're promise, in a new covenant? One of a promise and one of a, a, see? Of a bond. Yeah. So it says these are the two covenants. Okay? It says one from Mount Sinai. That's when God gave to the Ten Commandments to Moses. Okay. One in Mount Sinai which gender of to bondage which is agar. That's bondage. That caused you to be in slavery. The covenant was all that the Lord said we will do. Doing it on their own screen. It says, For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. One by the flesh, one by and the answer promise. to Jerusalem, which is now. Mm -hmm. It says, But Jerusalem, which is what? Above, is free, which is the mother of us Post all. Ball. They talk about, they talk the about. Mother Africa is the, is the mother of the mother of the mother. Of the you see that the mother it's, is the, Bible the bride. Says Jerusalem is the mother is the bride. The mother of us all. Wait, T. Wait, T. The mother is the bride. Mm -hmm. The mother is married to the bridegroom. Mm -hmm. You see, we are the guests. Mm -hmm. We're the children. Mm -hmm. You see, you understand it now, then? Kind of. So the mother of us all. The mother is the bride. The mother is going to come down. Mm -hmm. The mother's new Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got Revelation chapter 3. Turn Mother there. of us all. Mother of us all. Us. Uh, Mother is in Jerusalem. Uh, Revelation chapter 3. And she was the one person. And so it was the bride. It was, a, it, was, it was something. And then we got to watch him. Watch him. Uh, Gary, got him Hey, 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 hey. Come here. Come here. Come Okay. So, Revelation chapter 3. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 3. So, it was something that happened with the virgins, okay? Mm -hmm. In 1844. Mm -hmm. It was an open and shut door. Mm -hmm. There was a church called the Philadelphia. The Church mm -hmm. of Philadelphia. That's 1844. That's the end of the 2300 days. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so, it was something that went on. It was a wedding that went on at that time period. Jesus Christ, he rose up from one compartment, one chamber in the sanctuary and went to the next chamber. The next chamber is called the most holy place. This most holy place, that's where that's where the voice is coming out for the bridegroom. The church, the angels, are coming and delivering this message. Revelation chapter 3, it tells us this. And to the angel of the church. Verse 7. And to the angel. The angel is a messenger, right? Yeah. The angel is a messenger, a star. Okay? Go ahead. In the hand of Jesus Christ. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things, saith, He that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth and shutteth and no man openeth. He opens the door, nobody can go in. Mm -hmm. And that's where we invited to, the, the chamber, right? He says, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. That's an invitation. That's an invitation into the, into the, you see? Yeah. It says, and no man can shut it. No man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength and have kept my word and have not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan. That's the church here on earth. That's the bride on earth. You see that? Yeah. That's the Frankenstein bride. The bride of Frankenstein. Thank you, That's... 
It says, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews. Those are seven day minutes, right? They don't even the synagogue at this time period. And are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come to worship before your feet and to know that I love you. Because they kept his commandments. Mm -hmm. Because you have kept my words of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come, which shall come upon all the world. So this message is going to go worldwide. And it's going to come upon everybody. Everybody's going to be tested with this message. It says, to test them, try them that dwell upon the earth. See if they really love me by keeping my commandments. Fear God and give glory to Him for the hour of judgment has come. See, do they really love me? And God ain't going to put nobody to a test again. Are they going to show glory to me? You're going to be just straight put to a test. It says, behold, I, Jesus Christ, come quickly, behold. I mean, hold that fast which thou hast, let no man take your crown. Yes. Because that darkness is going to take your crown. Mm -hmm. It says, to him that overcometh, I will make a pillar in my temple, the sanctuary in heaven, of my God, and he shall get and he shall go out no more. He shall go out no more. And I will write upon him the name of my God. You can call him what you want to. God won't write the name of his God upon it. He don't tell us what that name is. Everybody get caught up on his names. Mm -hmm. And the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem. Not the one over there, everybody going over there trying to start a spectacular life. Not that one over there. <laughs> New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. That's the bride. Mm -hmm. And I will write upon him my new name. New name. Everybody's getting tried with these false doctrines. This secret rapture, man. Mm -hmm. This, uh, uh, oh, um, Jerusalem, you need to pray to Jerusalem. We need to pray for Jerusalem. Should you pray for Jerusalem, you're going to be burnt up with them. Yeah. And you got to know the name. You starting up sacrifice, that means that you have denied Jesus Christ. If you plan on starting up some sacrifices over there again, you plan on being destroyed with them yeah, over there. They That's for a king. false they prophet. For Jesus to come to it says that this new Jerusalem yeah, is coming down yeah, from heaven. God says he's going to write upon you a new name. That means a new character. The Holy Spirit is going to write a new character. It's going to change your character, who you are. You're going to be a new person. Amen. Yeah. Only by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You can't do it, but we can allow the Holy Spirit to do it. It says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And that's what that candle is, right? Mm -hmm. That candle. And we'll stop here. Is that the answer to your question, Lily? Yeah. Okay. So now we know who the bride, we know who the bridegroom is. Let's get one more scripture on who this bride is. Okay. Mm -hmm. Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. It says, this is Jesus speaking. <clears throat> the last words of our Lord and Savior. Written in the word of God. He's speaking in this in red. It says, let me start at verse 13. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Mm -hmm. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Do his what? Commandments. Is that keeping the seventh day Sabbath? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That they may have a right to the tree of life. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Is that heaven? Yes. So if anybody telling you. Is that a secret rapture? No. Okay, I'm going to make this clear. It says, for without are dogs and what? Merchants. Sorcerers. Sorcerers. Druggists, witchcraft, sorceries, those who cast the spells, those who giving people portion potions, druggists, poisoners, spoilers, and magicians and sorcerers. It says those are going to be without. And dogs, what is a dog? A dog is a watchman that can't bark. Yeah, they can't warn nobody. That's scared to warn people. Those are some dogs. Isaiah dogs. chapter 56, they're some dumb dogs, ignorant, and they cannot understand this. Yeah, it says, without our dogs, sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Josh, change. 
It says, I, Jesus, sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root. Jesus says, I am the root and the offspring of David. And the bright and the morning star. And the spirit and the bride. The spirit and what? The bride. Say, come. The bride is inviting us. You see that? The spirit, the Holy Spirit and the bride. Say, come. The mother, the one from heaven. Say, come. Not the mother of harlots. Say, come. And let him that hears say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him drink, take the water of life freely. You ain't got to buy it. It says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of this prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in his book. That's the wrath of God. Mm -hmm. yeah. It says, And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. That means they like going to be put out. It says, and out of the holy city, New Jerusalem. It says, and from the things which are written in his book. That means heaven. Mm -hmm. All the good stuff. For he which testified these things said, surely. He who testified these things, that's Jesus, said, surely I come quickly amen even so come lord jesus and the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you all amen see i got everything highlighted up everything so let's pray let's pray